Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for open mic? Spoken and heard open mic here at Kit Book Coffee in Austin, Texas. I'm Ernie B, and here's your host, Hot Tamale, and a lovely Lost in Thought. We're overproduction is our middle name. I just like doing that. Oh, I got to turn your mics on too, right? Hold on. Give me a second. Where's okay. my, there I am. Woo! I don't know why when you said that, I just got this Fisher Price vibe when you started saying that. Like, where's my microphone over and over again? Did he just say Fisher Price? Yes, he did. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Lost in Thought. Get used to it. Oh, my God. What's happening, kickball? You're about to witness the best, the baddest open mic in the ATN. Spoken and heard live every Sunday night at Kickbutt Coffee, Music, and Booze. That's right. This is not your average ordinary coffee shop. We do have a full bar. Full bar. And behind the bar tonight, we have the goddess, Alyssa. Alyssa. Who will keep you fed, caffeinated, and... Buzz. But nothing shows your undying love and affection to your bartender like what? Tips, tips, tips. tip your bartender, and she will feel your undying love and affection. Trust me. And no, don't go over and hug her. Remember, consent is everything. Yes. <laughs> you heard her. You heard her. Just so give her a dead president hug with a nice fat 20 in the tip jar and she will feel your love and affection. She's like, wow, that dude really loved me. There you go. Okay, uh, let me see. I'm, I'm totally off my, um, my motor here. What, 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 what do I do? No, 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 I already did that. Mm -hmm. No, 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 that, that comes later. That comes later. Yeah, Tom, keep up. <laughs> okay, the drinks, okay, the drink specials tonight are 425 Mixed Wells. Get your antioxidants and your booze at the same time. And if you're really not too into the booze, we have delicious coffee, tea, or cocoa drinks. You know, that way when you pass DPS on the way home, <laughs> you're good. <laughs> you're good. So let me, if you want to come up here, sing your song, dance your dance, and strut your stuff, come over to Lost and Thought, me, Hot Tamale, or Ernie B behind the soundboard. Go over to Ernie B just so he can say... I got my taxes done. Woo! Like four days ago. I was about to say only 48 hours before. No, just kidding. <laughs> and, and my kids were like, oh, I did mine a month ago. I was like, you have an EZ. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got a 1099, so I have to itemize it. Did I, I have insurance, car, house. Fuck. Yeah, it's not I don't remember what that tax form called that. Huh? Shut up. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't confuse me right now. I'm running on caffeine and chili. This is very strange. Yeah, I know. Okay, so the open mic pointers. If you have not been here before, welcome to Thunderdome. Well, just like I always tell everybody, we are live. We're, like Ernie B, you see him back there? He is controlling the lights, the sound. The rotation of the sun. And it's, and it's ecliptic, yes. Yeah. And the video. So if you want to go like, hey, I want maybe my mom could see me on video. Let her know. Let Type in Kick Butt Coffee on YouTube. And when you see our opening splash page where we're all like this, you can kind of, and then check the date. If it was today's date, you say, hey, mom, check it out. I'm 30 minutes in. And Ernie takes tips as well. Yes, he does. Okay, you, you see behind his monitor right there? Guys, turn around. Point it out. The guy's in the booth in front of the sound booth. Okay, yeah, right there. You see those QR codes? Those are for tips for our amazing, incredible, unbelievable sound guy. So you're like, wow, Ernie made me sound good. Tip him. Nothing says I love you to the sound guy. Like, to Oh, look, th yeah, there's the splash page. Uh, you missed it. <laughs> okay, and so the open mic pointers. Five minutes or one song so we can get everybody on stage. When, the five, when your five minutes is up, all performers. I will give you a little flash from my phone. That means wrap it up. Don't try and go, oh, can I get one more song? No. We are live. How, lo how long do we have? We Five have, minutes. How, oh. wait, 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 was that, how many people we got? What? Like 15? 92. No, 75. No. What if one day, Ernie, I actually said 92? Well, then we'd have a lot of show to do. 
Yeah, we'd have to keep buying drinks and stuff because we're going to keep running until everybody performs. What you got, Lost in Thought? Count faster. 75, 36, 19. What? 18. 18 18 performers. So don't, don't be dragging ass up here. If you have a lot of stuff to get on and off, five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes is your set from as soon as you get up here. Start your first note. That's when I start the timer. Oh, and, and musicians, uh, okay. uh, please be in tune before you get on the stage. That way you don't waste time tuning while you're up there. And, you yes. know, we can move along and get everybody up on stage. As much as we love the tuning song, we are live. Okay. Support your open mic and buy something from the bar. Yes, water is delicious, but so is everything over there in the cold case. Check it out. Giant cookies, muffins, juice, cold sodas. Get it. Eat it. Drink it. Or as Ernie says... Buy, purchase, consume. Enjoy. Yep. Can you cuss on stage, Lost in Thought? Fuck what? I'd, t- I'd take that as a yes. And Ernie B will give you a gratuitous beep. There you go. <laughs> Be considerate and quiet while other performers are on stage. But as Lawson Thought says, We love audience participation, even during a piece. But look around you and read the room. Read the room. Because if we get any drunk hecklers in here, we're going to throw your ass out. Just letting you know. You, you should see Lost in Thought when he's d- doing a bouncer. It, it's pretty scary. It's always the quiet ones. I, I think everyone can agree. I look, I look pretty intimidating. Right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, it, it's the Aries. It's the Aries in him, seriously. Okay, Girl. no heckling. While we are up here, open mic, everyone's working on their acts so they can go elsewhere or just keep it going, you know, end up performing on a cruise ship. We want you to work out your acts without anybody going, all right, goddamn, what's wrong with you, bitch? Yeah, no. <laughs> Don't we, we've had some pretty yeah. rude people sometimes, though. Yeah. It does happen, so we're, we're telling you no. And then another thing, ladies or gentlemen, if, if you get a creeper hitting on you, let us know. If it is unwanted, let us know. Go on, look, look, use. I have a thirst for violence today. Okay. <laughs> and, and she's equipped. She's jumped over that bar before. Yes, yeah, she has, so you better be <laughs> no, careful no on lie. that. So, I mean, you could, just, you could come over to Alyssa, or you could come over to one of your hosts, and say, "Uh, yeah, that guy over there in the corner in the white hat, yeah, he's bothering me, whatever. We will have a talk with him, and if he doesn't reel it in, we're getting rid of him. So we want you to say safe space. This is a safe space on Airport Boulevard. Safe space. Okay, yeah, I know. See, you like that little parentheses thing? Remember that South Park? In my safe place, my safe place. Ernie B, man, we got 18 performers. I'm trying to get through these tips. Thank you. Okay, if you are on the list and you are not here when your name is called, we will move on. We're not going to go looking for you. Like, for example, Bob going once, Bob going twice. On with the show. Okay. Okay, Okay, I already mentioned that about the flashing light. At five minutes, wrap it up. We are live. Okay, is that everything? What? In vivo. It's nice to see that he's participating in this right now. Yes. Just say yes. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, start the show, Lost in Thought. I'm going to start the show. All right. Yep, this is me starting the show. All right, so let's hear it for the Australian live wire himself. Let's hear it for Tom Moon and anyone else who's going to come out on the stage. This is audience participation, people. Get your asses up here. That's right. Now your seat's up on stage. We've got more space up here than you have out there between your ears. That's the spirit now. Beautiful, beautiful. Participation is everything. I spent my night last night watching other people's actions, which is like 200 drones going over. And I thought to myself, what's the alternative to that? This is the alternative to that. Peace and love and poetry and music and harmony and happiness and collaboration and community. Yeah, I kick butt spoken and heard. Because if we don't, other people are going to give you an agenda, which is like uh, hate someone. Well, we don't do that very well. We do a lot of happiness and hate, so come on up. Why are you here? Um, I'm going to do poetry. I'm going to sing. 
come on up and tell us why you're here because no one's going to believe that people actually correspond with each other and actually co uh, co talk with each other, listen to each other. As they say, listening is the first prayer, respect is the second. And tonight you're going to get a heavy dose of actual, actual, actual human communication. This begins, of course, long before this. It began 16 years ago in two other venues. And finally we come here, an extended venue, which is given to us by the grace of Tom Goering and every person who's participating. This is called the whole airport boulevard extraordinary experience. And what it is, is we invite everyone that's in the room to come up on stage and join in. And when they do, they realize that what they do is perfectly fine by everyone who's listening. So if you are brave enough to get out of your seat and come on up now, this microphone is waiting for you. And that means you, and you, and you, and you. And of course, people quiver back like I used to quiver back in the back of the room, back of the classroom, back of everything, thinking, no, no, I'm not worthy. I can't say anything. I can't do what that does. And everyone realizes finally you can. It's now Obama, man. It is actually 2014, spring, and it's Austin. And this is your homeopathic dose to all the disharmonies that are outside there. You got a poem inside you, like a winged bird that wants to be heard. As Charles Bukowski said, there is a blue bird in your heart. And oftentimes he tried to keep that blue bird down so the bird didn't sing like a flute. No, but the bird, the bird wants to be heard. And every time you have inside your heart something that wants to get out, you come to an open mic. But a lot of open mics are not really open, are they, eh? Are all questions rhetorical? Do you think I'm talking to someone else? There's only us here tonight. So if you can, get out of your seats and come on up. This mic is completely open. And if you think I'm talking to someone else, you two are sitting there. You're sitting ducks, man. I know, I don't want to intimidate. There's nothing worse than going out somewhere and having someone like, you know, a comedy open mic. They pick on you and you become their material. We are tonight. By we, I mean every person in this room. There's no separation, no alienation, no existential dread or angst. This is actually an improvised experience. But our people are page-bound grammarians. We are dialecticians. By that we mean we're in the moment. And this moment will never come again. Whatever you've got, sing it out now. It's like the parable of the wedding feast in the old Bible when you invite everyone up and they sit there in their chairs and you think, okay, if they won't come, then at least I'll activate myself, son. And that's what we're here for. Soon you're going to see Dr. Reggie Goodwin. He comes here live from South Carolina. <coughs> He's got a PhD in nuclear physics, but he's part of our open mic community. There are threaded souls who have come through this stage over the last 16 years. And they've gone on to other places and spaces where there are no open mics at all. Go to Omaha, Nebraska. Go to places outside Dallas. Go to places out on the fringe of the desert and you'll find that only the wind is singing through your soul and ain't no one with ears to listen at all. So here and now is the best we can do. And all we got is you, each one of you, right? There's no one else will do. So why hide? Come on up if you're brave enough. Come on up. Yeah, yeah. Come on. That's good. That's good. Living human being. Come on. The test is, of course, you pass. So here he is. Life is art. What am I supposed to do? I feel empowered. I feel happy. Thank you. And he just gave you permission, permission to be yourself. No one else is going to live your life. You're the only one here tonight. And if you think that someone else is going to say your thoughts, your thoughts and feelings, or your songs or poems, they're not going to do that. They've got their own. So be brave. Steal this time back now. We've got a short little haiku of the night. Yeah, come on. That's brave. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Come on, come on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we got bubbles. we got balloons. Come on. People laugh and say, hey, what can bubbles do to stop nuclear war? Well, if you are preoccupied with happiness, you're not going to bomb anyone, are you? Come on, souls. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, pick another one. There. You found it. It's really good. I was waiting for that. There's nowhere. There's nowhere like this. 
I've tried, I've tapped at the door of every open mic in town. I go around on Monday nights, I go to Fredo's ATX corner of South Congress and Altor. And there the Convergent Arts allows me to join with other musicians and poets of the spoken word to actually articulate new panaceas for the complex days we find ourselves in now. Because people don't trust words anymore. They don't even trust images with Photoshop and AI and ChatGPT4, no, no, no. But we're not programmed, are we? Each of us has got a unique way, a little alchemy, which is our own, our own way of gliding through the telepathic times we find ourselves in now. And then I go on the Union of Poets from Washington, the, not that Washington, but the other Washington, on Tuesday nights, where the Union of Poets allows Zoom, so we have 22 poets on Zoom, and we're talking over the airways, but Zoom don't do no good no more because you gotta start reducing the numbers because you can't keep coming back. There's no continuity in this world anymore. Everything is discontinuous narratives. Everything is broken up and parsed by some editorial and by other people judging us. Ah, too late for that. Participation is everything. And then of course you come up and there's Wednesday nights at Oak Park. Oprah on the corner of South Lamar and Altor from 7 to 10, Convergent Arts once again. And they say, whoa, 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 man, you can do it. And I actually believe them. So I stood up and this woman stood up and she started, I want you all to sing with me, peace and love and harmony. That's... Eventually, she got people singing peace and love and harmony in the course of that evening. And it's a little place called Opa Wednesday nights happened. You can check it out. And then, of course, Thursdays, we have a thing called Lazy Days, which my friend Red Traveller convenes. It's an instant prompt, instant anthology gathering for people to write the future now because we ain't got no past anyhow. It's a new world we find ourselves in. And Red Traveller convenes out from 1 to 3 at 5335 Menchak called Lazy Days CBD Inspiration Harmony. And then you come Friday nights. I'm down there at... Casa de Luz in the third eye. Third eye meditation lounge. Really gentle and harmonic. Do you want to speak? You're welcome. Okay. Third eye meditation lounge, 7.30 to 10 every Friday night. Pretty good, you say. Ha ha, not good enough. I want more free speech. I want freedom of expression. I want freedom of movement. I want freedom of community. I want freedom as far as we can stretch the idea that we are all free. Do you believe that? Are all questions rhetorical? I digress. Okay, we're coming to the week now. We're coming down Saturdays. What's on happen happening on Saturday, National Poetry Month? I gotta tell you what's happening. Round Rock Library has once a month readings and they're from 1.30 to 3.30. <coughs> Georgetown Library has got readings once a month. 1.30 to 3.30. That's Saturdays, oscillating libraries. Then of course, Sunday night, here we are back. We're back because we want to be here together. So on the 27th of this month, up in Salado, I'm putting on a poetry festival to which you're all invited. Table Rock Poetry Festival. It'll go from noon to nine o'clock. Just turn up, open mic, open heart, open life. And you, you got your wings here tonight. So I hope to see you in Salado on the 27th of April for National Poetry Month, Table Rock Poetry Festival, where you'll see Eddie, Red Traveller, and every angelic person here this evening. Welcome to your spoken and heard. That was going to be the last person up here. <laughs> Give it up for Tom Moonbird in the Airport Boulevard experience! Boy, the next reunion is going to be a mother. It's going to be, what, we're going to have to run out the AT&T Center. Oh, my God. All right, loss of thought. We're going to have to get this puppy rolling. We're going to have to kick this pig because we've got a lot of performers to get up here. Who's first? So, coming so. up first. Well, second, really. Not necessarily a new voice, but it's been a while. It's been a long time. New used? Gently used? Factory second? Maybe. Okay. Irregular fit? 
All that. <laughs> so, coming up next, we have Bill O'Brien. <laughs> I thought I was a, a lounge singer. Okay, I have an announcement. Someone lost their clothing tag. It's a 3XL. Okay, forget about it. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling some type of way. Uh, I'll be turning 65 at the end of the month. And, and uh, there's some positive things about growing older. Um, the older I get, I'm starting to feel more racist. <laughs> I seem to be racing to the bathroom more frequently. Yes, I am. I am. Yeah, thank God for those uh, bladder control garments. Okay, diapers. Uh, I'm not shame. You're laughing at me, but trust me, I am your future. <laughs> You're going to have some leakage. Okay. There's some uh, pros and cons in wearing these uh, bladder control. Like, you know, I went out with my buddies a couple of weeks ago, and, and we were drinking. And uh, the whole time I'm out there with the guys, he was like, Bill. You haven't went to the bathroom once. I said, because I have a bladder like a steel drum. So at the end of the night, they said, let's go. I said, um, wait a minute. I, I can't move. So they went to pick me up, and they said, my God, you weigh a ton. I said, it's just water weight gain. That's all it was. Hey, you're going to be there. So they put me in the car, and then the garment exploded. <laughs> my God. My engine flooded. And now FEMA has uh, designated me as a walking mobile disaster area. I have to get flood insurance everywhere I go. Uh, but one positive thing about wearing these things. I was at the beach in Hawaii, and uh, I forgot to take the garment off. And uh, don't ever do this. Always take it off before you put on your bathing suit. So this wave hit me, and my bathing suit blew up like a life raft. That wave took me to San Francisco, <laughs> back to Honolulu. It was all good. Yeah. All right. So if you haven't heard, I am Bill O'Brien. I am Irish. That's right. First thing you don't say to an Irishman is top of the morning. Don't do that. That's movie stuff, movie stuff. But I am Irish. My family crest is a big old pot of collard greens, circled by macaroni and cheese, and, and two chicken wings. And if you don't believe they're black Irishmen, trust me. We are everywhere. Just go right down the MLK IRA Highway, south, and you'll see barbecue pits as far as the eye can see. There's some things about being Irish, though, that uh, I'm a little resentful about. Like, they stole a lot of stuff from us black Irishmen. You know, like, uh, my uncle Tyrone used to barbecue, and uh, McDonald's stole the McRib from us. And uh, we were the forerunners of pest control. That river dance thing, it really wasn't a dance. It was just stomping out the roaches. <laughs> really is. But anyway, um, being Irish is pretty cool, you know. And if you don't believe me, I got the potatoes to prove it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit apprehensive about comedy. I had to kind of take it on down a notch because I see the young lady posy there. I don't want to damage her, you know. Um, but yeah, um, that's all I have for tonight. Thank you very much. You've been a great crowd.
Mm-hmm. Give it up for Bill O'Brien. <laughs> Ernie, you got a flathead screwdriver? Why? This thing needs to get tightened. Check it out. <laughs> okay, I, I deserve that one because that was from earlier. Shit. Okay. Now loosen, loosen the the that, and then spin the pipe instead, it's, instead of that's the mic. That's what she said. Okay. You know, I heard that joke one time when they said, "That's what that's what he said." Actually, that's what she said. Actually, that's what they both said last night in bed. All what? right, before the crickets commence, lost in thought, who's coming up next? It is a mystery indeed. It is coming up next. Let's hear it for Quaid Wayne. Sorry about that. You told me I was after Eddie, and I forgot that that was that guy's name. That was my mistake. Oh, okay. Good. It's your fault, then. All right. Kick butt. Yes, excited to be here. I'm a little worried that there is a kid in the crowd. Um, Does she do earmuffs? Does she know what that means? Great. Awesome. I love to hear that. But how are you guys doing? Are we doing good? All right. I'm doing bad. Yeah, my uh, my ex girlfriend is getting married tomorrow, and um, yeah, I'm not taking it well. Honestly, all day I've just been debating whether or not I should call the wedding venue and tell them that there's a bomb in the building. <laughs> I probably will not do that. No, I'll probably just let it detonate. So uh, my parents are divorced. Anybody else in here have divorced parents? Oh, wow. You guys are happy it happened, huh? Uh, <laughs> it wasn't good. Okay, I'm going to ask you, miss. Um, who got custody, your mom or your dad? Mom. Your mom, okay. Joint? Okay, but when they decided that, was it amicable, or did they, like, really fight about it? No, about Fuck that. <laughs> I hate when it's amicable. I don't think it should be ever. I think when your parents get divorced, they're supposed to fight over custody because that lets you as the kid know just how much each of your parents cares about you, right? You with me on that? That's what my parents did. I was 10 when my parents got divorced. And I'm not trying to like brag or anything, but my parents went to war over who's going to have custody over me. In the end, my mom had the better lawyer, so dad got stuck with full custody. Can I ask you again, Miss? Uh, did you ever feel as a kid that you caused your parents' divorce? No. No? Well, you're wrong. You caused it. <laughs> that's what I think. But that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm 90% sure I caused my parents' divorce, and I don't care at all. Because I wasn't an accident baby. Is anybody else in here white trash? Or is that just me? <laughs> just me. Okay, that's fine. I don't know. I don't care at all doesn't bother me that it's an accident that I'm alive, you know? And me and my parents, we still joke about it. Like, uh, like, like they like to call me the happy accident. Yeah, because they say that that's what the doctors called me at the abortion clinic. No one ever likes that joke. I don't get it. It makes me laugh. I came out swinging. I don't know. It's fun for me. Uh, so I've been playing a lot of video games recently, and uh, my girlfriend's been watching me. It's her favorite activity, I guess. Just watch me play. Red Dead Redemption 2. Anybody know what that is? A couple people? A couple nerds? Okay. The rest of you, all you need to know is that it's a cowboy game. You're a cowboy. You've got a horse. you got to brush it, feed it. Uh, at one point, my girlfriend turned to me, and she was like, Quay, do you realize that you pay more attention to a horse in a video game than me? And I was like, babe, I love that horse. (laughs) All right. It's over. That was it. Uh, So I'm an Uber driver. That's how I support this uh, horrific dream that I have. Uh, It's pretty awful overall, but uh, there are some good perks to it. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but uh, have you seen this, this new TikTok trend where girls will flash their tits to their Uber drivers? Yeah. Have you seen this? No. 
Okay, I cannot get any of the girls I pick up to believe me either. And this is just... <laughs> There's got to be something about the way I'm saying it. I don't know. Be more earnest from now on. So uh, abortion, that's thing, something people care about, right? Yes? <laughs> Sir, can I ask you right here? Yes, you. Are you pro-abortion or are you against it? it. You're for it? Yeah. Wrong. Wrong answer. The correct answer is, I don't have an opinion. Because it's the woman's body, right? Yeah, take that, sexist. Yeah. I mean, that's how I feel, truly. I don't have an opinion, one way or the other. And I tell my girlfriend that all the time. I'm like, hey, listen, if you ever got pregnant, it would 100% be your choice whether to keep the baby or keep living in my apartment. <laughs> truly, no opinion either way. Just know I fully support you with either choice. <laughs> all right, getting a little too dark. That's fine. <laughs> I'll bring it back. Uh, is anybody here in therapy? Yes? Nice. You should quit. Scam. That's all I'm saying. Scam. That's what I believe. I, don't know, I tried therapy one time. and um, Well, I was living in California at the time, and um, a friend told me to go to this woman who called herself a spiritual therapist. That's what she called herself. And this lady told me that I have subconscious PTSD because my twin brother died in the womb. Yeah, exactly. She was very serious about it, too. And she was like, Quaid, is there anything that you wish you could have said to him? I was like, mm. Um, last one out was a rotten egg. <laughs> Better luck next life? I don't know. I thought that was pretty good off the top of the head. I guess not. All right, I've been Quaid Wayne. Thank you very much. Give it up for your host. Here comes Lost in Thought from the very back of the store. Thank you, Lost in Thought. So I get a message uh -oh. that uh, just now that uh, um. there's a band that played here over a month ago, and then they're like, oh, did you happen to see, we might have left our banner here. Oh, a month ago? Over a month ago. Good luck, bitches. It's like, um, oops, oh, my God. Cameras. There's a lot of stuff that happens in a month. Good luck. We still have a bass guitar that living Ooh. back there. It's pretty beat up, though. <laughs> I, I was going to say, me first, Christina. Damn it. Okay, lots of thought. Give it up a, for. Did, did you say a bass guitarist lives here? No, but, no, uh, no. Yes. Give it up for. Well, let's hear it for Quaid Wayne. Woo! All right. So, lots of thought. Who's coming up next? Coming up next. Don't look at me. Look at them. He always Hi, does everyone. that. Don't look at me. I, I know I'm gorgeous, but goddamn, that's <laughs> the audience. See? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See. You're, Hi, you're, you're adoring fans. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I never do. <laughs> now, coming up next, let's hear it for Eddie. <laughs> Eddie, a.k.a. Vivid Nothing. How's nobody doing? Um, is there a dongle in the house? Yes, there is. It should be on the the cord down there. It's coiled up by the. It's the Thunderport one, Thunderbolt thing. And I do have the USB C dongle as well, in case you have an Android. The, word of the, day, dongle. the catchphrase is dongle. Good to see you guys on the other side of the season. The sun's out. I've been out hibernating for a little while and uh, working with the band and whatnot. Um, I want to thank uh, Christina Culverhouse for giving me a, one of the pendants. It was like a cool little globe, a little earth. It's great. My nephew loved it. It was freaking awesome. Appreciate it. But I got, right now, I got some blues for you guys, improvisation. 
Uh, let's see how that goes. Play. Turn up the backing track a little bit.
Thank you. And boots and pants 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 and boots and pants
then finally there might be recognition and reconciliation before reparations. That, of course, passed. He was an actor to boot. He is as recognizable in the Naked Gun series as the star Leslie Nielsen. He was a gr he was a guest on variety shows and celebrity interviews. He dated Nicole Brown when she was barely legal. Despite being the mother of his second marriage's children, he was jealous of her beauty. One domestic violence call to 911 found her with an imprint of his hand on her face. The police shrugged and left. I wept at the verdict because I saw the eyes of so-called white people roll so hard to see their brain stems because I saw so-called black people cheer, not that the juice got away with murder, but for my frat brother, Johnny Cochran, it was the fact that OJ could pay for expert lawyering, which many of us could not possibly afford. Most of us go into the jaws of the beast each time we go into the criminal justice system. The Central Park Five were almost railroaded into the electric chair by a full page ad in the New York Times, exonerated by DNA evidence. And the real predator confessing, Khalif Browder, however, was mauled by the beast, committing suicide after three years of confinement without a speedy trial in sight. He was framed for stealing a backpack that he didn't steal because we so-called black people have always known the system is broken. It was always rigged against us and for the so-called white and privileged. 1681, the bacon of the rebellion, is when they invented a lie to divide us. We have been waiting since Crispus Attucks in 1776, since Medgar Evers in 1963, since Malcolm X in 1965, since Martin Luther King in 1968, since Rodney King in 1991, after OJ in 1994 drove a Bronco in slow-mo, maybe after the slow white Bronco chase after an acquittal that just didn't seem right. When he got sentenced for civil liability, you cheered just like you did when he was on the gridiron. Did you cheer when the token respectability golden boy got off scot-free? Dying after prostate cancer isn't exactly dying peacefully, but he did die surrounded by his family. We thought maybe you could finally see how a system rigged by rich people, it might blow back in your collective faces, but you didn't. And we are here waiting for another rich celebrity to game a broken system on a stormy Monday. A former president goes on trial for hiding his secret affairs with an adult film actress and a Playboy centerfold. It wasn't hush money. It was FEC violations denying American citizens the right to know what character the man who arranged the scheme had who was running for president after the Access Hollywood tape. Salute immunity is Absolute nonsense. But I expect that from a criminal whose only time he is not committing crimes is the few hours he's sleeping. Fingers crossed on Stormy Monday for justice. All right, give it up for the doctor himself, Reggie Goodwin. Broadcasting live from Greensboro, North Carolina. That's me on the trombone. No, it's not. Okay, what no, is it not, not on, you, the, on you on the trombone? So, Reggie, you knew Johnny Cochran? Well, we're 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 in the same fraternity, Cap Alpha Psi. So I that poem really surprised me. When I finished it, I was like, I didn't even know I was going in the direction it was taking me yet. That's that's how weird that poem was for me. But I say it's it's contemporary. I might as well say it. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's one of those. Yeah, I remember where I was when. Let me see when 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 the when he got acquitted. You know, if if the gov if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. I was mm -hmm. getting off the bus on Riverside Drive. I still remember. I was listening to my radio. I was like, "What?" And the guy next to me was like, "I was like, oh, nothing. Sorry." <laughs> Yeah, and of course, don't, me, don't yell out loud on Cap Metro. No, don't do it. Of course, me, like most of the country was watching the, the playoffs with me and my buddies. We were barbecuing and everything outside. We had the TV outside. I, of course, me, I had it hooked up to a sound system. So of we had to crank it. And then that happened. I was like, what? What? Yeah. And it was a nail biter of a game, too. And, that, and then that was it. It was over. Like, what? Next thing you know, we're watching a white Bronco for, you know, however many hours that, that chase went. 
But Th thank you, Dr. Goodwin, as always. All right, thank you. I'm going to uh, listen to it on YouTube now. All right. <laughs> okay. Take care. All right, you too. Coming up next, loss of thought. Take it away. One of our first new voices. Of the night. <gasps> new voice. Let's I love that. Let's hear it for Philip. Kick butt coffee. Yeah. How are we all doing, right? Yeah. Uh, my name is Philip Crossley. This is my first time here performing. I've seen a bunch of shows here before. I love this place. I'm glad it's here. monitor uh, vocal one two one two there we go yeah thank you I can hear myself now honey I want to be your bee buzz around your flower all day long honey From dusk till dawn <laughs> Darling I want to be your tea
this is the part where you guys get on stage. <laughs> I was waiting for Tom Selleck to join me. Uh, Tom Selleck. Mm. <laughs> you know, if he grew his stash, like really, th- I, I, I could see but that. See, it would have to be a big old thick porn stash. Yeah, you know? big old caterpillar. It, it can't be a tiny little. It's got to be a Michael McDonald lip duster where you can't even see your lips mustache. Yeah. Yeah. Some yeah. of these Smokey and the Bandit stuff. I didn't want to say Harry Reams because then that would expose <laughs> pornography, and I'm not going to do that. Well, you already did, so too late. Yeah, I know, too late. And, and see, the only reason why I know that is that's the, that kind of reminds me of the episode where Eddie Murphy dressed up as a white guy. Whoa. SNL. It was hysterical, early 80s. That's, that's what I was weaned on, people. That's why I'm as weird as I am today. Lost in thought. Take it away. Harry Reams, did you think you of that? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Lost of thought. Who's coming up next? Another new voice. Another new voice. Let's, let's hear it for Posey. doing poetry. (laughs) So for this first one, it's about, well, Earth. Earth is heating, forests burning, tundras melting, glaciers cracking. Something we can help, we choose to let melt. Earth is is our home and only treasure trove. Oxygen rich, water pure, we kill it every day for our own selfishness. Someday, Doomsday clock stuck at 90 seconds till midnight. Our earth will be no more if we decide to keep on track to the way it's going. Better just turn back the clock. Ozone protects water, helps us live. Food we need, sun for a good time. No sun, no life. No life, no earth. No home, no human race, and animal life. All life gone to dust, no more, no less. In a world so full of pride, times a community diverse and bright, like a rainbow in the night. Flags so different, yet all show diversity and community from every corner near and far. Pride unites us like a star. Lesbian, gay, bi, trans, queer, intersex, ace, and much more. Their individuality radiating through their personality. (laughs) That's all I got. First time, let's hear it for Posey. Lost in thought. Did you see that? The birth of a no poet. I did, yes. Yes. I think we all saw saw it here live at Kickbook. And I saw it in her eyes. As soon as she heard the applause, she's like, I'm going to do this again. (laughs) You never get enough. It's like like Pringles. No, it's Lay's. Like Lay's potato yeah, Re- chips. Re- Reggie's watching on YouTube. He's like, uh, I'm, loving the, the, I'm loving the vibe. This young poet is the future. Yeah. All right. Okay. When, when, when Dr. Goodwin says it, it's real. It's real. All right. Laws of thought. Who's coming up next? So from a new voice to a movie star, at least a movie star sounding name. <laughs> okay. You know what? We need to move on from I'm that particular sorry. I'm so fascinated by his name. It's so cool. I can literally picture him like in credits as he's like turning like like this to the camera and you can hear you can see like these credits just flying across the screen. Yeah, what's his name? James Garrigan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh man, I gotta follow Posey. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a fresh new model with the old. I'm about to be 35. That's terrifying. Yeah. I remember when I was the future. 
And then that just that just left. <laughs> it was like, hey man, you've had your chance. <sighs> now I'm in the 35 to 60 bracket. That's terrifying. Uh, that is that's terrifying. It used to be 18 to 34, and you're like, we value your ideas. And then now it's like, not anymore. Not anymore. They don't value my ideas any longer. Uh, people keep talking about this new ele this election coming in November. People are worried that uh, one of the candidates is going to die before the election. A lot of people, yeah, a lot of people say it's going to be Biden. Some people say it's going to be Trump. But if I was a betting man, uh, historically, I'd bet on Robert Kennedy. That is. <laughs> Betting on a Kennedy to die is a lot like uh, betting on the Yankees to win the World Series. <laughs> it's going to happen twice in the 60s. Um, it's the best joke I've ever written in my life. I love it so much. It's so good. You guys are smart. There's a smart people. I've told this people just go, I don't know who any of those people are. Who are the Yankees? I don't even know who that is. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. I am getting older. I do I, I have a habit of uh, talking to younger women. Um, I was talking to a woman under 30, and she was like, look, seems like you're trying to give me the riz, but you're just giving me the ick. <laughs> and I didn't know what any of those words meant, so I went home and I registered as a Republican. That is... <laughs> that's what happens. You just, like, pretty girls are saying things that don't compute. I need to focus on taxes now. That is... Immigration is really important all of a sudden. I don't know why. Don't know why. I, um, I don't know. If you don't know what the Riz or the Ick is, ask Posey. She'll tell you. <laughs> She'll tell you. Uh, they do sound like STDs, though. That is what they sound like. The Riz sounds like an STD from the 20s. That's what it sounds like. Sorry, John, you got the Riz. You can't eat clams no more. We're... <laughs> going to prescribe you smoking three times a day. <laughs> now the ick sounds like a STD that Harry Potter would get. That is what that sounds like. Mr. Potter, you have the ick. It's a long, there's a longer name. Um, but he, 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 that's what happens when you, when you have sex with trans goblins. If you don't like that joke, don't blame me. Blame J.K. Rowling. Do that. Anybody else wish you could just brain blame all your problems on J.K. Rowling? That is... <sighs> I'm sorry, baby, I'm late. I, uh, but I was reading Gobble of Fire, and... Uh, <laughs> just happened. I don't know. I don't know. Don't give a, a billionaire... Uh, don't give a homeless woman a billion, a billion dollars. Don't do that. All right, some people think that's funny. I don't know. She was a homeless lady. I don't know. And then people are mad at that she has bad opinions. Um, she came up with words like Hufflepuff. I don't know what... The, okay. All right. Well, let's move on. Let's do different other things. I, um, I went out with this girl a couple times. And uh, the other day she sent me a text that started with the phrase, after some reflection. <laughs> I didn't read the rest of the text. I didn't have to. <laughs> I didn't have to read the rest of the text. Nothing good has ever happened when a woman texts you after some reflection. It's never after some reflection, I think we should try anal. That has never happened in the history of texts, women, or anal. That has never happened. It's always after some reflection, I realize we're two different trees going in two different directions. And you're poor. Oh, 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 oh. I'm the first man that's been dubbed for big poor. Oh, no. Oh, no. I never tell you that, but that's what they're telling you. I got to go explore other options. All right, cool. I get you. I, uh, I don't know. I, um, if, a, if, a man texts you, if a man sends you a text that starts with after some reflection, the next text will be a picture of his penis. Every single... <laughs> And yes, the fellas over there, they know, they know what's up. Although I feel like it's a little different with y'all, but you know, it's just, it's just two pictures of penises back to back. Just, 
Yeah, you're like, yeah, we don't even do words. We don't even, we don't even bother with words. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, if it's working for you, don't even stop. I have to, I actually have to, no words. <laughs> I actually have to say sentences and lie a lot. Um, I've never understood, I've never understood uh, uh, sending dick pics uh, because it's not the most interesting thing about me. Um, my perfect penis is, is my, I have a per, that is not what it means, ma'am. <laughs> I can hear you, just so you know that. <laughs> that means it's, 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 it's fine. Uh, I don't think we should be sending dick pics. Instead, I think we should be sending unsolicited bed frame pics. Uh, because they know you have a penis. They're not sure if you have a bed frame or not. That is, that is way more important in the long run. Thank you for being true with that. So, um, no, one more, and then I'm going to get out of here. I don't think we should be sending... Uh, I don't think we should be sending dick pics. I think we should be sending unsolicited I just cleaned the bathroom pics. Because a big dick is great, but black mold is no joke. All right, guys, thank you so much. My name is James Kerrigan. You all have a wonderful evening. I am, but it's not, nothing's happening. There it goes. All right, coming up with a new type of porn. Give it up for James Kerrigan. That's here for James Kerrigan. See, that he's not wrong about that. If you if if a guy sends a picture of himself like wearing rubber gloves, scrubbing out the tub, ooh, baby. Hey, well, what's your number? Hmm. Okay, sorry. Hey baby, I just washed and folded the laundry. Marry me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lost of thought. Who's coming up next? Oh, it's been a while since this next artist has come home. I'm talking to him. Oh. He's Blind over here. Blinders, blinders. See, yeah. I'm he sorry. He stands just... in that position like half sideways, always. Okay. <laughs> Look that way. You move the mic. You're still looking the same direction. <laughs> I'm sorry. Introduce the next person, please. Fuck you both. Um, so, it's been a while since this next artist has come home, but we're glad to have him home. Such power in his prose. Will, like we discussed earlier, we often refer to Reggie Goodwin as being president one day. This next Hashtag performer. Hashtag Goodwin 2024. This next performer, we often tap as the vice president. Coming up, let's hear it for Ryan Widener. I didn't even know he was here. So I'm trying to cultivate a more positive outlook, and maybe that means returning magic to the world. So this performance is brought to you by someone susceptible to rumination on past traumas, insecurities about the present, realities, and weariness about the uncertain future, so I'm a human. <laughs> our humanity is both our blessing and our curse. And I do find it responsible and practical to keep perspectives in balance and accept things for what they are rather than how we might wish they could be. But maybe we don't always need to yo-yo between the darkness and the light. And lately, I've been being challenged to enjoy basking in the sun, despite knowing that nightfall will eventually come. So bask I will, and suddenly, ouch, a sunburn. I identify as a realist, though my mindset is often misconstrued as pessimism. But is it misconstrual? The pushback I've been receiving is gentle, assertive, knowledgeable, and by all means, toxic positivity is just that. A toxic denial of the severity of the situations at hand. So, where is the middle ground? And I think A slash the source of my pessimism might be my losing sight of the magic in the world. And I don't just mean having awakened from the fever dream, now threatening societal collapse, what some describe as escaping the illusory matrix. But there is also an annoyingly constant habit of mind to respect my intensive scientific knowledge base by readily and always defaulting to an, oh, that's because, response to musings about ourselves and the natural world. 
And I try not to impress this behavior in others, lest my ego manifest as arrogance and pride. But I do it to myself constantly. And lately I've started to question whether this mental practice is self-kind, because there's magic, magic everywhere. Some of my inner turmoil comes from balancing my identities as a spiritual atheist and a modern scientist trained in materialistic paradigms. Because I think we all grapple with embracing a self-comforting worldview that balances the rationality of the known and the mystery of the unknown. And finding that sweet spot of balance is a hobby of mine. And some explain my hobby as my being a Libra, but that's silly. We all know it's my because my spirit is a zebra, a zalibra. <laughs> and I find it fascinating how the stories we tell ourselves inspire how we manifest reality. Because truly, your life is the story you tell yourself. So I need to ask, what exactly am I narrating? And we are told to be the change we want to see in the world. So even if you italicize or underline that statement, it will always be bold. And I agree with the heartfelt sentiment. But I confess that I have a habit of trying to carry the world on my shoulders. So that points to my empathy, sure. But it also points to my trying to put others' oxygen masks on them before masking up myself. So do you see that realism, pessimism stepping in? So I think it's time I let my shoulders rest because no one should carry the weight of the world. See Jonas in The Giver. Because after all, life is meant to be enjoyed, not endured. And this recent inspiration has prompted me to challenge my inner monologue. And did you know that not everyone has one? And reevaluate how I approach the world. My existential worries about our sociopolitical, ecological, and climate crises have left me tangled in the spiral web of the following mindset. So A, what if society collapses? What if the ongoing six mass extinction collapses biodiverse ecosystems around the globe? And what if apocalyptic climate catastrophes ultimately return humans, us, to the pre-industrial, uncertain hunter-gatherer times of days gone by? What if, what if, what if? And I know a cultivating more positive outlook on my personal and our collective trajectories cannot magically assuage these worries. And I am deeply fearful that we are approaching the final act in the play of our self-inflicted demise. But still, this Zalibra would like to at least try embracing a mindset such as B. What if we actually come together and create a collective, equitable, and just society that balances our means of enjoying the present and prepares us to endure the likely inevitable hardships of the not-so-distant future? What if we actually protect nature and transition the rapacious practices of big corporations to truly sustainable and world-loving means of flourishing humanity, knowing that we will need to make sacrifices along the way? And what if we actually figure our shit out and devote ourselves to passionately adapting to the rapidly changing climates and prepare the planet for a post-fossil fuels world? Because even this positive mindset is stewed in the certainty, but... I don't think that hope is lost, and I need to have hope for myself, for two children whom I love deeply, and for the future of our species. Earth will go on even if she rids herself of the cancer that calls itself the sapiens. And I want our species to have hope and pragmatically create effective solutions to our problems. But cultivating that change in the world means manifesting change within ourselves. And I don't have any magical solutions to our problems, but there is magic in our creating them. Hope is not enough. We have to find faith in humanity and love, truly love one another, ourselves and our planet. And by cultivating this loving kindness, we may actually save ourselves in much of the breath-giving beauty that we call life. So where do we go from here? I think it means stepping back and reevaluating how we view ourselves in the world. Because surely I'm not the only one overwhelmed by the bizarre unfoldings of our shared journey on Earth. The wicked, cool, and unnerving advents of AI are a bold reminder that no one actually knows what the magic that we call human consciousness really is. And I love to follow Alice down the philosophical rabbit hole. Are we products of an unflinchingly inanimate universe? creations of a paradoxically all-powerful god, denizens of a solipsistically sophisticated simulation. 
you can't handle the truth, and maybe that's true. What does seem to be the reality is that we are all here on this bizarre and beautiful blue ball of mystery, magic, and intrigue, marching towards the same inevitable fate. We try to enjoy the journey while we can, because don't we see? The magic didn't disappear. It's still all around us, and it's us. And just because I can teach for hours how plants and some microorganisms perform photosynthesis and use light energy to sustain us all, it doesn't negate the fact that we still don't understand the fundamental nature of energy and matter. And I can expound upon the universal genetic slash computer code used by viruses and all life forms on Earth. It doesn't settle the debate of whether life originated through replicated pathways or in metabolic processes. The mystery of how we got here and the uncertainty about where we are headed, they are each an impetus for believing that our existence is something magical. And I'm not sure if this will work, but I'm trying to use the magic all around us to catalyze my own hope and optimism. Because after all, despite whatever the future holds, I am here. And I want to continue living with dignity and frivolity. So may whatever force you want be with you and be well. All right, give it up for Ryan Widener. You, you know, the, the vice pres. The very first time he read. I don't know if anybody could hear it, but he plays music on his phone. Yeah, while yeah, reading. I can hear but it. But the very first time, I didn't know that the first time he read, and I was going crazy trying to, where's that music coming from? I was like, did I leave something on? But yeah. The sound engineer's heck. All right, folks, don't forget about the drink specials, Mixed Wells, 425. There's also some delicious th stuff to eat or drink. And I totally forgot to mention the about... Bar. The host drinks. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. host drinks, yes. Ernie B has a drink named after him called the Ernie B Power Up Shot. Ernie B, you could describe it. It's like a double espresso shot with some a little, little bit of alcohol in it. But it pretty much tastes like a candy bar. And um, But it, if, you're, if you feel like you're dragging ass a little bit, get an Ernie B Power Up, and you will be powered up. You'd be like, boing. I wouldn't advise having one after 10 p.m., though. <laughs> oh, you'll stay up the rest of the night. And Lost in Thought has a Lost in Thought brain blender, which is basically yeah. like what? F what? Four liqueurs? Think so, Something yeah. like that. Dr take a couple sips of that. You'll start acting like him. <laughs> <laughs> if See, you want to. If you want. And I have a hot tamale hot cocoa, but the bar has informed me you can also get it iced. It's basically a twist on Mexican hot chocolate, but instead of cinnamon, it's fireball. Nice. <laughs> but, and, and also, got to mention, it doesn't fall under the drink special price. It's different. It's another price. Just letting you know that. Yeah, yeah don't go, hey, I thought I could get a hot tamale hot cocoa for four twenty-five. Oh, no. <laughs> it's something else. All right, laws of thought. Who's coming up next? Coming up next, he's back. <laughs> Who's back? He's Let's back. hear it for Griffin and the Flying V. Oh, shit. Well, no, because he didn't leave it here last week. Why was the coach yelling at the vending machine? Why? He wanted his quarterback. <laughs> what, what, what did the pirate say when he became an orangutan? 
I am AT. No, I read that wrong. Anyway, what's the difference between a guitar and a fish? What? You can't tune a fish. You can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. You can tune a bass. A bass. Why are ghosts such bad liars? You can see right through them. <laughs> uh. Hey, Ernie. Hmm. I, uh, did I tell you when I ate a kid's meal at McDonald's? Why? His mom was furious. <laughs> <laughs> eBay is so useless. I tried to look up lighters, and all they had was 13,749 matches. <laughs> um, how do you think the unthinkable? Nah, that's not a, that's not a good one. <laughs> leave you da- leave leave you hanging. Okay, uh, no, I couldn't pronounce the word actually. Uh, it's impossible to lose a homing pigeon. If your homing pigeon doesn't come back. What you've lost is a pigeon. <laughs> you see, some of these just don't. I, don't know. I get it. <laughs> okay, uh, one more. Uh, why don't you? Uh, you know you don't. You know you don't need a parachute to go skydiving. You need a parachute to go skydiving twice. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I didn't write any of those. Test, test. Hooray, yeah, yeah. All right. If I were a smart man, I would have stuck with acoustic, but here we are. All right, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between, we are Griffin and the Flying V. Good to see you, as always, at Kick Butt Coffee. I got a new-ish song. Some of you have heard this silliness before. Uh, it's uh, what I think the blues would sound like if it was based around Phrygian Dominant instead of uh, Mixolydian. Uh, if you're not a music theory nerd, congratulations. I can levitate birds, but nobody cares. My 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 uncle was a clown at Ringley Brothers Circus, and when he died, all his friends went to the funeral in the same car. Yeah, we can hear it. Well, you can hear the guitar, but the looper? It's all coming out of the same in- output, right? It should be, anyway. Sorry, folks, this has never happened before. Un momento. It's all, actually, it's all part of the show. We planned this. Yeah, yeah, I meant, I meant to do that. Yeah. Let me try turning it off and on again. <laughs> I bought my friend an, an elephant for his room. He said, thanks. I said, don't mention it. There we go. All right. That was interesting.
Medusa. Mama Medusa. Mama Medusa. Mama Medusa Mama Medusa Mama Medusa somebody I met while time traveling through ancient Greece. Well, her hair is wild, her hair is alive. She got a big tail, only the strong survive. Hey, hey, mama. Mama Medusa. Hey, hey, mama. Mama Medusa. Mama Medusa, you rattle my bone. One look in the eye and I'm solid stone. I pulse and burn with every bite. She constricts with all her might. Hey, hey, mama. Mama Medusa. Hey, hey, mama. Mama Medusa. Mama Medusa, you rattle my bone. One look in the eye and I'm solid stone. What have I started? Oh, by the way, Bookworm96 Burr, watching on Twitch, said, I'm a music nerd. How come I don't get congratulated? That was, that was actually pretty good. Ernie, mm -hmm. check out these guys. They can clear the stage pretty fast. Yeah. Where's Lost in Thought? He's lost. Oh, lost in thought. He's, he's, he's over here. Uh, a tutor who tutored the flute tried to tutor to tutors to toot. Said the tutor the tutor, is it harder to toot or to tutor to tutors to toot? Hey, Lane. Thank you. We're doing a show, you know. Lost in thought. Lost in thought. Please report to the office. Lost in thought. You're going to get your ass kicked. Lost in thought. There he is. Woo! Sorry. Uh-huh. That's what they all say. Griffin in the Flying V. Woo! So you need standing sideways again. I know. There. Next up. Next up. Let's hear up. it for Marcus Henry. I was up there. <laughs> Yeah. 
There should be a red cord down there on the floor somewhere or a black one. Uh, play some. I got no. Oh, wait, hold on. I got the wrong channel. No. No, I have nothing. This, hold on. So I'm not gonna blame you for this, but my name is Mark Marcos. Um, so oh, yeah. I'm sorry. No, you're okay. Sorry. <laughs> you're okay. Um, yeah, usually I, I do write songs, but um, I don't know. I just kind of felt like coming up here and doing a cover. So so this is um, Diamonds and Gasoline by the Turnbike Trevadors. some gasoline If I can't afford you darling then I can't afford to dream It's a time I should be moving It's a time I settle down Will I sit still or will I feel the wheels spin around brightest bird that ever flew I'm just someone you knew the road you traveled on all the colors shine to fade away well they're just like New Year's Day they're here and then they're gone and I would buy for you a diamond and myself some gasoline if I can't afford you, darling, then I can't afford a dream. It's a time I should be moving. It's a time I settle down. Will I sit still or will I feel the wheels spinning around? Lord, I love you. Wish you only knew. Well, I wish you had a clue. I wish. If you had a clue, you'd know, but I'm stuck here in Tulsa with my Oklahoma blues, with a pair of concrete shoes that got me sinking pretty low. And I would buy for you a diamond, myself some gasoline. If I can't afford you, darling, then I can't afford a dream. It's a time I should be moving. The time I settle down Will I sit still Or will I feel the wheels Spinning around Will I sit still Or will I feel the wheels Spinning Thank you. 
Thank you. Let's hear it for Marcos Henry. Yeah. That was beautiful. Very that delicate, was great. Very delicate music. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll have an announcement to make. Oh. We will not be here next Sunday. Oh. I know, I know. There's mm. there's three other shows happening that day. Oh, shit. Got three shows? Yeah, I got Ukulele Fest at 1 right. p.m. And then Guitar Center Showcase at 4.30 p.m. And then the punk rock show at seven. So yeah, we're gonna be preempted till the following Sunday, which okay. is uh, I had it open here and it went to sleep. I think it's the twenty seventh, is it? Uh, the twenty eighth, Sunday, May uh, April twenty eighth. We will be here at seven p.m. regular time. Cool. So we're off next week, but we're back the week after. And don't forget, next month is Gemini season. Uh oh, cool. And and for those of you that go, hey, what about Taurus? Like I said, next month is Gemini season. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So if you go into any open mic any given time, you ask for the Geminis in the house, there's a lot of freaking Geminis. Right. Me and Tom, for one thing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. My favorite saying is, I am a Gemini and so am I. That's right. Yeah. All right. Lost of thought. Who's coming up next? Coming, coming up hey, next. Hey, stop those people. It's free to come in, but it's $5 to leave. Okay, come on. I need 20 bucks. Freeze. No, just <laughs> Lots of thought. Take it away. Coming up next, let's hear it for Connor Gilmore. New voice. New voice. Oh. New voice. What mic should I use? Uh, this one, huh? Wait, no, I'm not gonna do that. All right. Awesome possum. Yeah. All right. Oh my gosh. Kick butt coffee. How are we doing, everybody? <laughs> do not put stickers on the toilet seat or in the toilet seat. What is happening here? Oh my gosh, I love your band. Oh my gosh. Oh great, I'm so happy you like it. Where did you hear my band from? Uh, anyway, just a little ob observation there. <laughs> Why? Why, in the toilet seat, like in it, come on. How do you clean that? How do you guys, I've, I've worked at Starbucks, I've cleaned toilets, like how do you clean that? Anyway, all right, now to my actual bits. <laughs> um, so, uh, growing up, um, my teacher uh, uh, was my mom. Yeah, I was homeschooled. Yeah, home, give it up for homeschoolers. <laughs> but no, uh, usually, as soon as I say that I was homeschooled, people kind of just like auto load what they think a homeschooler is. Like, oh, you're that, you're that, that weird guy. But like, here's the thing about homeschoolers. They're actually the most diverse community that you'll ever imagine because it all depends on who your parents are, right? You don't know, like, you don't know. Yeah, there's some weird homeschoolers. You meet their parents, pretty weird people, <laughs> pretty weird people. So let me tell you a story about uh, my parents so you know who, what type of homeschooler I am. So uh, I was at a homeschooling event. And uh, there was this odd guy there who, he was like 15, like the rest of us, but he was the type of person that just like comes into a room and be like, ah, oh, sheep, I see sheep. I will lead the sheep. You, move the chairs over there, move the boxes, set up the microphone, and you do that. And no one gave him any responsibility. He just saw, he fancied himself a leader. And so... He started like telling me what to do and giving me orders, and that annoyed me. I'm kind of a rebellious kid for a homeschooler. And so he's like, hey, do this and that. And I was like, oh, wow, uh, you're a beautiful man. 
And that just wiped his high dr- hard drive. He was just like, uh, like every sense of authority left his body. And um, this guy walked up to, uh, this guy figure, tried to figure out who my parents were, found out, found them, and then pulled them both aside and said, are you, are you Connor's parents? And they're like, yeah, what, what's going on? He's like, your son said something very inappropriate to me. And they're like, oh my gosh, oh, what, what did he say? And then he was there, then he was like, uh, he called me a beautiful man. And my parents paused for a moment, looked at each other, and then laughed in this nerd's face. So that was my parents. That's, <laughs> that's who they were. My parents were pretty hilarious. Um, but yeah, like while everybody else was going to school and doing stuff, we were going on snowboard trips. It was really a fun, um, childhood, but, um, yeah, uh, but sorry, sorry to bring it into like kind of a sad, dark place, but I'm sad to say that like a few years ago, like my dad passed away and he was like a really really cool guy. Do you know how hard it is to lose a father who's like cooler than you? It's really tough. And a a few months ago, I was just looking through the shelves, kind of organizing my life, and I found birthday cards. And there was one from my dad. And so I pulled it out, opened it, and he was a man of very few words. And he just, he wrote, happy birthday, Connor. You're a beautiful man, dad. (laughs) <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, um, so that's the end of the bit. It's a brand new bit. Thank, thank you for listening. But I have one last thing I would like to close with. Um, I'm really upset the guy left, but I just wa- really want to say, uh, the guy that's sitting right over there, his song was so creepy. It was so, so creepy. I would never, ever trust him with a bouquet. Like, what the heck? Like, oh my gosh, flowers are so amazing. Mmm, mmm, flowers. Anyway, thanks, everybody. Bye. Um, Hosts. They're just sitting there, both of them. (laughs) <laughs> thank, thank you, Tom. That was pretty good, Tom. Okay, wait, hold on. Oh, okay. Give it up for Pete Garza. Okay, it's true, yeah. though. There, there are stickers. I'm sure if, if you use the restroom, there's stickers, band stickers, in the toilet, like inside, in the bowl. And I don't want to know how they got them in there. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. But there's Seriously. a lot of them. Yeah. And, and I kind of feel bad when I'm peeing on a worm suicide, but whatever. No, they'd probably like that, actually. Yeah, that's true. They'd probably love that. They, like, set up their mic stands and stuff with, like, pieces of dolls. And, okay, whatever. Okay, so coming up next to the stage. What can I say about this guy? I mean, you can say so much about him, but you could say nothing about him. But all I know is that you will always have an impression of him. You'll, you'll, you'll never forget him. Give it up for Lost in Thought. Where's the music, Ryan? I'm trying. Okay, he's up there. <laughs> All right. Um, Ryan's poem actually um, inspired me to write this. Um, you have to forgive me. This is something that's going to be a little difficult to read. And the last performer said, <laughs> dark, <laughs> oh, just wait. Um, okay, new shit. New shit. Yesterday, I came home, breathing like I was wounded, like I could j- just breathe enough that this cruel fire could unchain from my head and release from my stomach even though it's been there for years. 
That's when I put down the backpack, picked up the phone, and called the suicide prevention hotline. Whoa. 10 years ago, I had a catalyst. He was quite the catalyst. Movie star looks, steel blue eyes, body grizzled with muscle and hair, a walk that could crush boulders and a deep masculine voice gruffed on a, on a rigidness that would make Tom Finland proud. And he wanted me. And even hinted at wanting to be with me. My first real relationship. Except it never happened. First date, I was so terrified of him rejecting me that I made it happen. Eviscerated my emotions and left my remains all over him. He kissed me goodbye and later texted me, thanks, buddy. And that was the last I ever heard of him. That was a decade ago. My mother's heart was cracked open before she had me. And she became comfortable in playing stagnant, convincing herself she was never meant for more and passed that on to me. Being gay is hard enough. But being gay and taking on generations of residing yourself and finding home in self-imposed insignificance and unimportance this man told me I was, uh, I was bubbly and childlike and innocent, and I felt so seen when he said this. Finally, a man I'm attracted to, and the stars aligned, and now, when I'm told I'm this, it's still a compliment, but it stings. And this light, this inner child I have chained up and held him in chains, making him feel like the small child, like the small child I was when my caregiver beat the shit out of me. <laughs> it made me think every time I had a chance at happiness, I pushed it away because I'm terrified. I'm scared of being happy because I don't know, I don't know what it's like to be held and be loved because I am a gay man, 44 years old, a man who has never known what it feels like to be so secure and embraced because I could never picture that for myself. There is enough hate out there. So why, God, why am I always so ready to be the first one to keep parts of myself that want nothing more than to feel dark and alone and feel like the people I've always thought were cool or attractive looking down on me. Like somehow I deserve it. And that fucking conniving voice always saying, welcome home, Lane. Give it up for Lost in Thought. See, that's what I always tell people when it's like, when you come up here, you're bearing your souls. Whether you're singing, whether you're, whether it's something you wrote. Whether you're, you're standing sideways. <laughs> no, he's not now. Now he's standing. <laughs> All I can say is it takes real big brass cojones to get up here and bury your soul. And this guy has big brass ones. We love you, Lost in Thought. We love you, man. Thank you. Like, I've, like I've, always, I've always told him, like I've always told him, each one of us as hosts plays our part. And when one person's missing, the balance is all thrown off. It is. It's like... I've told Ernie, I said, when it's just me and him and he's like out of town or something, we just sound like a married couple. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> like a sitcom. Yeah. And it, the balance is thrown off. This trio is what is the chemistry. This is what makes this show. 
This is why we are the longest running open mic in Austin, Texas. Thank you. Woohoo. Woo and who. Well, and kick butt coffee, too, of course. Yeah, I guess. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course, duh. Yeah. Shoot. I mean, we were even we were even back in the triangle. Remember that? Wow. Oh, yeah. That was a little bit ago. That never really worked. No, parking was a bitch. Ugh. Okay, lost of thought. Take it away. Who's coming up next? So y'all ready for some comedy? Yeah, we could do that. Nice. <laughs> like Gimli would say, I, I could do that. Uh, okay, he's always watching Lord of the Rings when he's editing. Honestly, I've seen this guy perform. I remember this guy performing, and I think that he can, no matter what the previous setting was like, he can always bring it back to a funny base. He's... I think he's that talented. Coming up, coming up, let's hear it for Justin Hicks. Woo! Hey, what's up? Give it up for Lost in Thought and Hot Tamale one more time. Yeah. And I'll start on a sincere note. Like, I'm, I'm a comic in Austin. I've been doing comedy for about seven years. And uh, I appreciate you guys letting us into your space as comedians to perform. So give it up for yourselves for really supporting comedy and even letting us do this. So thank you for that. Um, I'll start on a warm note. My, my parents this year have been married for uh, 43 years. They've been 43 years of marriage this year. Uh, 43 years. I think it's... Um, you know, I think it's too long to, to be married. I think that's too long. Uh, <laughs> you ever get out of the hot tub and think, I should have gotten out 10 minutes ago? That would have been, I think that's my parents' marriage. Um, <laughs> nah, they're, they're good. I think I think what makes it work for them is um, they really balance each other out. You know, they're very different people, but there's like a healthy balance in the marriage. Uh, my mom's, you know, tough. My dad's a little sensitive. You know, he's a tough guy, but he's also a sensitive guy. I respect that. He has emotions. Um, I learned my dad was sensitive the first time I ever saw my dad cry. You know, it's a big moment for a kid. You see your dad cry for the first time. Um, first time I saw my dad cry, we actually saw the guy drown uh, in the ocean in a movie called Titanic. And... <laughs> As soon as Leo switched away, so did all the self-respect I had for my father, you know, because you can't be a dad after that. Hey, son, take out the trash. Hey, dad, Leo is dead, you know? <laughs> Get back in the house, you know? I'm a, I, I have a hard time with social media because I, I, social media really, it really pries in your insecurities, you know, so... Like, every time I get on Instagram, I get an article about being bald, like, every single time. Um, it's always about like growing hair or hats. It's never about loving myself, you know? It's never like nice stuff. I saw this article on Instagram the other day and it said that um, bald men actually have more testosterone than other men. Yeah, and, and you gotta believe a, a bald man wrote that article. Um, <laughs> That is Jeff Bezos funded research, if I've ever heard it, you know, just a bald dude behind a computer like, we're actually the manliest man. Uh. <laughs> no, no, we're not. Um, I, t I told that, that joke once and I told this joke at a, at a show and someone came up to me after the show and they told me, you know, like, your joke is true. You know, they were transitioning from a woman to a man and they said that my doctor warned me not to take too much tea because I could go bald. And that kind of hit me in a different way because I've always taken like little quips about being a bald guy, but I've never been referred to as the outcome of an overdose. You know, like that's a little, <laughs> that's a little rough. Like doctors are like, you don't want to be like this dude and it's just me getting coffee. You know, it's just, <laughs> it's a little, it's a little rough. Um, all right, I got some new ones for you. I, uh, I was in my apartment complex and I saw the missing cat sign and uh, the cat's name was Houdini. Oh, if, if you don't want your cat to disappear, you know, like don't, you gotta name it after something that stays, you know, like Roosevelt or like LeBron. LeBron never misses games, you know, like 
The best thing is like the sign was laminated. And the time it takes to laminate the sign, you could close your gate, you know? So a, a couple of weeks later, I saw another missing cat sign and it had like a reward. Like, you know, we'll give you $200 if you find the cat. You could just take that $200 by like four cats, you know? Like that's, or you could laminate the sign, it's gonna rain, you know? Protect yourself. All right, that just feels bad. Um, <laughs> Sorry if you have cats that you love. Um, I, uh, I I was watching this documentary about death row. I was having a weird day. Um, I was watching this death row documentary, and they said that uh, the most commonly requested meal for inmates before they're sentenced to death is uh, KFC. KFC is like one of the most requested meals. How is that not a KFC commercial? You know, like. <laughs> People kill for this chicken, you know? Like, <laughs> people are not asking for Popeyes, you know? Like, that's, isn't that like the weirdest, if you're an Uber Eats driver, isn't that like the weirdest order to get to like a penitentiary, like a 12 piece, you know? <laughs> I was also thinking like, people who get sentenced to death, they did something bad. You know, they get something bad, something evil. I think the people watching the execution should get chicken. I think that'd be more fair, you know? Just, is that person eating? All right. <laughs> it's a little dark. Um, I, I believe, like, you know, no, nah, I don't want to tell that joke. What I want to tell here. I'm a bald man, like I mentioned. I think what's hard about being bald is, like, bald men have no community. You know, we had we had zero zero pride. Like any any bald men in here? Yeah, that's that's how it always feels. <laughs> that's that's the energy in the world for us. Um, I'm a Gemini. I feel more supported in that community. You know, I went on a date today, and she's like, "Your only red flag is you're a Gemini." I was like, <laughs> "You really hurt our feelings on that one." That's cold. Um, Nah, this, bald men have no community, you know, it's, it's tough. Uh, like, I'm, I'm jealous of, like, like short men. Short men have a thing. Like, you ever hear I'm a short king? Have you heard this? I'm a, I'm a short king. I'm a hashtag short king. It's like, you're at Applebee's, sir. Please get off the table. Please get down. <laughs> we'll, we'll have your milkshake soon. Um, they said George Washington was six foot two. In the 1700s, he was six foot two. And that's, that's like really tall for that time. And I, I don't believe it. I don't believe it at all. I think if you, if you punch George Washington in the stomach, um, John Adams and John Quincy Adams would fall out of his coat, you know? Yeah. They're just trying to own more slaves. All right, that was my time. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. What I tell you, you can always bring back the funny. Let's hear it for Justin Hicks. Woo! See, I told you, go to any open mic, Gemini's, man. Yeah. Yeah. And a lever to keep it all together. Well, this is true. This is true. I'm a, f for me, in, in my particular instance, me, uh, Gemini's and Libras, we get along like peanut butter and jelly. Honestly, when I vibe with someone, I'm like, you're a Libra, aren't you? How'd you guess? <laughs> Yeah. All right. Last of thought. Take it away. Who's coming up next? Well, we're going to travel some. Oh. Yes. Gee, I wonder who he's talking about. Go. Doing that, that red kind of traveling, you know? Oh, yeah. Got it. Yeah. Let's hear it for Red Traveler. Yeah. I don't know why the play button is like getting stuck over here. So I am a 
Christina Culverhouse, otherwise known as Red Traveler. Uh, I won't go on much about me. I just kind of just want to get in there and play, but uh, I'm an artist. Um, make wire wrap pendants and paintings and so on and so forth. It's uh, ChristinaCulverhouse.com. Anyway, I'm wearing some of what I make, so. Okay, so uh, when I play, at least how I'm, you know, when I play, I put uh, basically what I'm going through, what I'm feeling, um, things that I that don't really have words to express. That's that's what this is. So I hope you enjoy the journey, and uh, here we go. Thank you. It's amazing what a little reverb and delay can add to an instrument. The serene, the wonderful, the compassionately talented Red Traveler. I love it. I love it. And yeah. make sure to check out her Instagram page. She also she has art around Austin and like I said, like she said, she's also got pictures of the pendants she makes. They're gorgeous. I wasn't I, I wasn't, have a couple. I wasn't feeling so much the moose in the wilderness this time. 
was feeling the more moose. Yeah, you know how when she plays, I always, it always feels like I picture a moose by a lake out in the mountains somewhere, just kind of by himself, like wandering around. But this time, I felt more. I was thinking, feeling more of a coyote, like kind of foraging around for specks of food and <laughs> looking looking for a rabbit to chase or something. Yeah. I was doing that during the eclipse, and Ernie's like, "Cut it out! You're pissing off the dogs around here." He <laughs> started barking. The, neighbor, <laughs> the neighbor's dog started going crazy. That was I, amazing, though. Oh I, my god! I also do that too, and we have a full moon at work. I'll walk outside and howl, coming back. A customer walks in. I'm like, "Hi!" <laughs> They're like, "Where did I end up?" All right. Oh wait, we also forgot to. The bar. The bar, always Ernie, the bar. Ernie, do your PSA. Buy, purchase, consume. Enjoy. Yes, don't forget about the bar, people. Drink specials. Yes. And there's also some delicious cookies. Grab a grab a giant cookie on your way home. He got it. So there. good. So good. And, like, and actually, we actually have one of the cookies over there that has the goddess Alyssa on it. It's, it's the bar wench. The bar wench cookie. Mm. It's yummo. See, I'm willing to get glutened up for... For Alyssa's bar wench mm. cookie. That was delicious. See, I, ha- I had to word that very well because I really almost said I'm willing to get gluten for Alyssa's cookie. And then I was going to go, oh, shit. Ernie always busts me on that. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm, I am. I, Bust. I, I, honestly, sometimes I make loss and thought look smooth. Oh, she said bust. Serious. Okay. Loss of thought. Take it away. Who's coming up next? <laughs> please, please relieve, relieve me so I can get off the stage. Or, or like my friend's wife used to say, you guys are stupid. Exactly. <laughs> Coming up next. Up next. Ah, uh, yes. Let's hear it for Spooky McDougal. Woo! Hey! Yeah, the Spookster. Oh, it doesn't have the pickup? No. Well, it does. It doesn't work? My cat peed on it. So it oh. Work. Gotta love your cat. It's cool. He's old. Oh, my God. Hmm. You got it, Ernie? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't have any jokes, so I'm going to do music. I don't have any new stuff, so I'm sure y'all are tired of hearing the, you know. <laughs> anyway, this is a Taylor Swift cover. <laughs> You're in your room. Oh, no, I fucked it up already. You're on the phone with your girlfriend. She's upset. She's going off about something that you said because she doesn't get your humor like I do. I'm in my room. It's a typical Tuesday night. I listen to the kind of music she doesn't like, but she'll never know your story like I do. Cause she wears short skirts, I wear t-shirts She's she got it and I'm on the bleachers Dreaming about the day when you wake up to find that what you're looking for has been here the whole time If you could see that I'm the one that understands you Been here all along so I can't you see You belong with me, you belong with me Walking down the streets with you and your worn out jeans I can't think thinking this is how it ought to be Sitting on a park bench thinking to myself He is in this season And you've got a smile that could light up this whole town I haven't seen it since the day she brought you down You say you're fine, I know you're better than that Now what you doing with a girl like that? Cause she wears short skirts, I wear t-shirts She's too captain and I'm on the bleachers Dreaming about the day when you wake up to find That what you're looking for has been here the whole time if you could see that I'm the one that understands you Been here all along so why can't you see You belong with me Standing by your way and by your back door All this time I'm looking, I know, baby You belong with me 
belong with me. You belong with me. You belong with me. Oh, I remember driving to your house in the middle of the night. I'm the one who makes you laugh when you know you're about to cry. I know all your favorite songs and I know all of your dreams, but I don't know what I'm playing anymore, it seems. If you could see that I'm the one that I'm Thank you, my name is Stuart McDougall. Oh, almost forgot the cajon. Give it up for Spooky McDougall! The multi-talented Spooky McDougal. Before you know it, he's going to come up here one day and go, yeah, I also make a killer creme fraiche. And it's like, whoa. <laughs> there was a South Park episode about, about oh, that. Oh, no. Of course where, there was. Where Randy wanted to be a celebrity chef. The gospel of South Park is South getting Park. to be like The Simpsons. They've done everything. They've done everything, yeah. Yeah, The Simpsons did it first, so. <laughs> All right, lost of thought. Who's coming up next? New voice. A new voice! Let's hear it for Todd Narder! I was just thinking he's going to have to put the microphone back. That's <laughs> all right. Yeah, I thought it was going to be all set up for me. I was also going to do a Taylor Swift cover, but I have to change my plan now. We good? Okay. Uh, this is uh, Cherokee by John Moreland.
Like the sky was burning, you had stars in your eyes shining for a feeling I could not afford to buy. But everything you taught me still rattles in my head. I'm staying off the of main street, you're talking. One giant step for Lane. Okay, wait. Check it out. The the condom's still here. Come on, people. If you want to get lucky later, there's some. Yeah, I found that under under the stage. Sex right there. I found that under the stage last night. Oh, Tom didn't bring it. No, that was from. I found that. Oh, like, well, sorry, probably Tom. from before, sorry, but it was behind the subs. Was we were looking. Somebody lost her earring last night, and we were looking for it, and I found the condom down there. They're, they're kind of a raunchy crowd, but they're well, responsible. I, I was blaming Tom for it. I'm sorry, Tom. Well, he may have brought it many moons ago. <laughs> Who knows how long it's been down there. Exactly. All right, give it up for Todd Narder. Yeah. Woo! That was, that was so ethereal. I love that. I was just, every little note just tickled my ear. I loved it. Thank you. Coming up next, another new voice. Another new voice. Let's hear it for Ashley Ghostkeeper. How are we doing tonight? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm from Alberta, Canada, so I'm <laughs> yeah, this is my first time to Texas, first time to Austin, and this feels like home here. Uh, 
really beautiful people down here. Um, so yeah, I guess you guys said to pour your heart on stage here, so I'm going to try to do that for you guys. Uh, this is a song I wrote called She's Easy to Love, Harder to Hold, and um, I wrote it a couple years ago, and now when I think about it, I'm not hard to hold, it's just not anyone can hold me, and I'm It'd be an honor. And it's just knowing my worth. And I guess that's what the song and this journey has been with it. She's easy love, but hard at home. Put your heart on the line and give it down to gold. She'll still walk away with a smile on her face, but she's hiding the truth. That you simply won't say You can sweet talk with her And words don't mean nothing You can call her beautiful She's hurt it all She's easy to love, but harder to hold. Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? She make you laugh. You'll make her laugh too You'll have the most fun with her She's full of life But it will fade It fades every time She gives herself away And that's why they won't stay You can call her beautiful Words don't mean nothing She's heard it all She's easy to love And harder to hurt Tell her nothing, no, no, nothing. She's easy to love. Thank you so much. <laughs> Welcome, Canada. (laughs) 
All right, give it up for Ashley Ghostkeeper. Holy crud, there's been a lot of talent tonight. I'm just kind of like literally my breath is taken away. Uh, as my daughter once said when we were looking at fireworks, she's like, I'm literally in awe. She was like five. I'm like, yeah, I have that on recording. And she's like, Mom, please stop playing that. <laughs> okay, what am I going to say? All right, coming up next to the stage, you might have noticed we're missing a host. He's taking a little pit stop. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. You know, he's probably going to come out and kick my ass, but whatever. I'm going to say it anyway. Dropping the Browns off at the Super Bowl. Okay, <laughs> coming up next, we have Brett O'Brien. Thank you guys um, for being here and incredible production. Yep. Um, I wish I had a talent like you guys. I just say fucked up shit. And I think my talent is just not caring enough. Thanks, guys. Um, a girl, she told me I was bad at sex the other day, which I didn't think was true because it was only 20 seconds, you know. How bad could it have been? <laughs> this crowd is um, a lot like my dick, small, different colors, and unresponsive. Oh. <laughs> I need a little blue chew. Um, I don't really understand why people are so afraid to die alone. Because if you're not dying alone, you're dying with like a group of people in like a mass tragedy. Like you're on a bridge, you got hit by a boat, or in a submarine. I think I'd much rather die alone. And you know when you die, you like shit your pants and get a boner? I don't think I want to be surrounded by loved ones for that. Um, I'm Jewish. Yep, people are surprised. They're like, you're Jewish, you don't look Jewish. And I'm always like, thank you. It's nice. Um, I don't really understand why all like Arabs hate Jews, you know? Like we let them take credit for 9-11. We gave them their big day, 9-11. You'd think they'd be like, all right, thanks. For this. Um, I feel bad for the guy in Tower 2 who was probably like, damn, that was close. You guys, okay. <laughs> What's that? Am I being played off stage? Um, I, uh, I think we're doing voicemails wrong. Like, I called me, my friend the other day. He didn't pick up the phone. He's like, yeah, sorry, I couldn't get the phone. You can reach me at... And then he just said the number I just called. Uh. I'm like, you yeah, already tried that. Okay. That's a lot of fun. You guys are crazy. <laughs> um, hmm. What else is great? I was watching that show, My 600-Pound Life. And before the lady got on the scale to weigh herself, she took off her shoes. <laughs> like, that's the issue. Your Crocs. I'm pretty sure it's your whale heart. And then her dog started chewing on her shoe. She was like, damn it, biscuit. I was going to eat that. No, actually, I weighed myself after sex the other day, and I was heavier, which I thought was strange. I'm like, there's no way there's half a pound to come in my ass right now. <laughs> Good. I'm, uh, I'm bad with women. I don't have any pickup lines, but I have drop-off lines. Like, bitch, don't tell anybody about this. Get the fuck out of my van. You should get tested. <laughs> you guys are sensitive. <laughs> This is a, I noticed no one swore up until I came up here. I'm talking about common ass. See, this is why I should just tell, like, I wish, you know, like, singers, they can just sing someone else's song. I'm just going to tell someone else's joke. Right? You know, there's black people, and there's, no, it's Chris Rock. You know, it's a good joke. Not for me, though. <laughs> I can't really, not my uh, lane. A kid, he reached out from high school recently to apologize for bullying me. Thought we were friends. It's hurtful. Okay. <laughs> it's 
It's not fun when that gets nothing. I feel like that makes sense. Um, hmm. My grandpa, he had open heart surgery the other day. It didn't work. He's still racist. Um, you know, I was talking to my homeless friend who was telling me the worst part about being homeless isn't the sleeping, which makes sense. You know, I'd imagine sleeping's the best part of being homeless when you're not awake for your fucking nightmare. If you've noticed, these homeless people, they're always coming up to you like, blah, blah, blah. clearly they're very well rested. <laughs> if they have the energy to torment. Uh, you know when you get home from doing cocaine, right? <laughs> a big cocaine crown, I could tell. <laughs> yep. You know when you get home from doing coke and there's like a little bit left on your key? You're like, oh boy, what a treat. <laughs> Looks like I'll be jerking off for the next seven hours. <laughs> You know you got a problem when you're jerking off to sunrise. Like, is that what people mean when they say they're spiritual? I don't pray, but I bust to the crack of dawn. It's a very divine moment. Uh, Y'all remember that whole, like, Chris Rock Oscar thing called the slap? I didn't, like, I didn't understand the joke. It took me, like, five. Like, first I had to look up who G.I. Jane was. Then I had to look up who that bald bitch was. Then I had to look up what alopecia is. Turns out alopecia makes you a whore. At least her hair is not an entanglement. Yep, heavy hitters tonight. <laughs> a lot of strong stuff. Um, <clears throat> I've noticed like the most attractive countries are the ones that have been conquered the most. You know, like Latin America and all those places, like beautiful people. But then you go to UK and it's just disgusting. It's just everybody's horrid looking. It's because no one's, you know, taken them. <laughs> There's something there. I didn't, okay, we got to peter it out. But thanks for sticking with me. Um, let me think of one more joke that you guys might like. Um, you think the first girl to wear, like, ripped jeans actually just survived an assault? But then her friends were like, oh my God, is that Louis? She's like, I don't know, I didn't see his face. It was, could have been Louis, it could have been anybody. <laughs> Thank you guys for putting up with me, that was really fun. <laughs> Keep it going for your host and all the other comedians and acts and yep. You know, it's true what he was saying though, is like a well, musician yeah, they can write they can sing that. they can sing or play an, an original composition or they could do a cover song by another artist. But comedians can't really do other comedians. I mean you yeah, you, you don't want to do another comedian's joke, you do your own joke, you know. Yeah, but the, it, it still happens. It, well, it, well they, they might it, borrow it, it, it's called ripping them off. They might borrow <laughs> or lend from, you know, a certain but yeah, but you don't ever see like a comedian tribute comedian. Yeah, you're like, here comes a comedian going, I'm doing a tribute act to Stephen Wright. Yeah, uh, or whatever. Uh, okay. See, I, I, I'll, I'll do that back here, but I'm not a comedian. I'm just kind of filling in time. You know, I'll say a one liner and that's it, you know. And I'll borrow from Stephen Wright or from whoever, but I'm not up there doing it, you know. And so okay. there's, there's a difference there. Ernie, g give me your favorite Stephen Wright. I'll give you mine, and then we're going to bring up our closer. Well, it's not my, necessarily my favorite one, but the first one that comes to my head is uh, I live on a one-way dead-end street. I don't know how I ever got there. Okay. Here's my favorite Stephen Wright. If you can't hear what I'm saying, it's because I'm in parentheses. Mm -hmm. I wish when That's I was born name. I could have said, quote, and then right before I died, say, unquote. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's so hear it for Brett O'Brien. Yes, Brett um, O'Brien. I was going to say, when he said, when we were talking about uh, the woman in the van, it made me think of when I first was living in Austin. There was uh -oh. this one time when I was walking home, and there was this, like, mysterious white van parked, like, right beside me, right? Did it right say there. free candy? Well, no, but oh, imagine... That was, that, that was me. I have a white van. <laughs> that was him. That was Ernie. <laughs> imagine, imagine where Mr. Hicks is sitting right there, right? Um... And I'm right here, white right van. Okay. Window unrolls. 
this woman goes like, hey, come here. And I do this. I like, I stop like right here. Yeah, what do you want? And she goes, want to have some fun? No. <laughs> and I, then I just, then I just walk away. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes, that, that happened. happened. That actually happened. Do you want to have some fun? I mean, I don't know if I don't know if they were like putting me some like kind of bait bus kind of porno or what. Yeah. If they were, they'd figure out they'd figure out they would have had the wrong guy, especially if it was a girl. Yeah. Oh my god! Okay, lots of thought. Who is closing out I our night? I just love how they're how these people. I are, know they're so they're, entertained by they're, everything. They're, they're 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 a great part of they're, the audience. They're, they're good feedback. A I love to it. You. I yes. love it. Thank you, thank you. Every time I hear a giggle, I want to keep going. Okay, come on. Okay, closing out the night. Closing the night. Better closer. Let's hear it for Pundi. Pundi! That's me on the trombone. Okay, no, it's not. Stroke song. That's me on the trombone. Okay, no, it's not. <laughs> I see you're shaking your head, Tom. <laughs> Tom's going, stick a fork in him, he's done. <laughs> no, no, Tom's like, why do I keep coming back here? <laughs> Give it up for Pandy! Pandy! Closing the night! Last voice! Oh, 
Okay, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. My, my toes have been curling from so much good talent tonight. Like I said, I'm just like, whew, okay, I'm gonna need, I need, if I smoked, I would go outside and smoke right now. Seriously, that's how good it was tonight. And we got to thank Alyssa, the goddess Alyssa, keeping us fed, caffeinated, and buzzed. I didn't even say Michael Bublé all night. Wow. You just did. You just did. Bublé. I just like saying Bublé. Try it. Try it when you go driving it, home. Go Bublé. It's a really, it feels good in your mouth. It feels good to say Bublé. And I have high respect for him since I ever found out he was tripping mushrooms during an interview. Yeah. You were? No, no Michael, Michael Bublé, not Ernie. Oh. I was gonna, did, I was gonna ask, did you get the job? This is why he's lost in thought. <laughs> We're talking about Michael Bublé. No, a press interview, not a job interview. You was a mushroom during a press interview? <laughs> Oh my God! Okay, should we do the thing? Did he, did he make them right there during the? Interview? Oh, okay. Look up Michael Bublé and mushrooms. You'll find the story. Okay, cool. Should we do the thing? Yes. You have been witness to the best, the baddest open mic in the ATX, spoken and heard live every Sunday night at Kick Butt Coffee Music and. and yeah, thank you everybody for watching online too. And just remember, we're not here next week. That's right. We'll be back on the 27th. In two weeks. Yeah. This is not just an open mic. It's a show. Not a show without each and every one of you, including you, Alyssa. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you and good night. night. Okay, Tom, are you going to rescue the balloons or am I going to murder them? I'll rescue them.